Hello and welcome back to Sports Cubed. I'm Zach Reynolds alongside Austin Harrelson and Tyus Gordon. We got a lot to talk about. First, of course, the Super Bowl was this past Sunday. And the Chiefs defeated the Eagles in a really close game, 38 to 35. Came right down to the wire, pretty much literally. Uh, but the Chiefs pulled it out, just like me and Austin predicted. Tyce, you were wrong. Yes, I, I was wrong. I, I'll take the loss on that. I can't lie. Well, we all predicted that it was going to be a close game. It was a very, it was and a very it was a game. stellar Super Bowl. It was stellar game. Kind of slowed down at the end. I think that's where a lot of hate came from, just because it's controversial. Yeah, you know, the holding it, call. Yeah. I think it, it was a holding. It was the right call to make. It's just it's a tough one. Yeah, tough. Call you can to make. Knit, knit that call, but yeah, part of the game. I think you can say it was a ticky tacky call, and that maybe they shouldn't have called it at that spot in the Super Bowl. But you can't say that the refs gave the Chiefs the game. Yeah, no. I mean, you can't blame the game. People are. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. But you shouldn't. Right. You are, but the Eagles players are being very respectful, though. They, they understand yeah. that the refs really... I mean, it was, a, I mean, it was, a, it was an evenly fair yeah, ref I mean, game. It was, it, Eagles were up 10 at half. Right. So it was just hard-fought game, just a little bit of a, a mid-ending right. football game. Well, I mean, uh, all the way through, it was I mean, really high scoring. I, I, I thought that it would end up that way when high scoring games in Super Bowl history. Both quarterbacks played amazing kind of going into it. People were saying, oh, Patrick Mahomes has been the best in Super Bowls. He had a really great game, 21 for 27, only 182 yards, but great accuracy, and he had three touchdown passes. And Jalen Hurts really stole the show. I mean, all season long, I've had some doubts. He's had some flashes, but it's still like, eh, you know, put it together. I mean, he had an amazing game, 304 passing yards, 70 rushing yards. Three rushing touchdowns, a passing touchdown. He was incredible. Uh, definitely didn't lose by any fault of his. Unless you want to count that yeah, fumble. Count the fumble. Yeah, the fumble the was huge. I mean, you, have, you do have to put that in there. But, I mean, heck of a game from him. Him and, him and Devontae Smith connected on, on a lot of good deep balls. A.J. A. Brown, obviously, in the end zone. Had the beautiful touchdown. Beautiful. Catch. That throw, was, that throw was amazing, too. I mean, he couldn't have put it in a better spot. And then... And, Isaiah Pacheco also had himself a good game. I mean, not he only had 76 rushing yards, but on 15 carries, very efficient running. Also had the touchdown, and then the two big touchdowns from Sky Moore and uh, Kadarius Tony. Both only had one catch, but I mean, big catches. Big catches. Big that, catches. that Sky Moore catch. I mean, it's just. I mean, you just come to know it from Kansas City. That play calling, he's the only guy on that side of the field. Yep. Well, couldn't get more wide open. It's the Super Bowl. Both teams, uh, by the fourth quarter, I think, just decided to stop playing defense. They were playing college football. Yep, yep. I, and I mean, both teams were just, I mean, just going down the field, doing whatever they wanted, really. Yeah. And the Eagles got off to such a hot start to start the game, and then Hurts fumbles, Chiefs defense takes all the way for the touchdown. Like at that point, I felt like the Eagles had all the momentum. They were up seven. They're going down the field, and then fumble kind of, I mean, put the Chiefs back in the game. But then Chiefs second half just played spectacular football. Right, and you, can't, you just can't give Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid and the Chiefs, I mean, that many chances. Like, you can't. No. That's something you just can't do. You can't give Mahomes more opportunities than he already has. I mean, because um, he's going to take advantage of it, and he clearly did. He played I outstanding. Mean, especially for getting hurt. I mean, yeah, and he had the ankle injury too. It mean, looked awful. I mean, bad. <laughs> and then he had that 20 yard rush to put him in prime position. I mean, he's yeah. the best quarterback in the NFL. Yes. Absolutely. You just Hands can. down. How many, how many more years of doing stuff like this till he's the GOAT? I mean, it's, it's a fair not, statement at this yeah, point. Right. I mean, and, it, and it's not that long away. I mean, he's, he's only 27. He's only 27. He's got two Super Bowls, two MVPs now. I mean, he's been to the champ AFC Championship. Every single year he started. Yeah, it's just, it's insane. Jalen Hurts, he's gonna try to get himself in that kind of going forward. I mean, he he can only get better, you would think. I, yeah. I mean, he had a really great season. And the Eagles, if you're an Eagles fan, don't feel too down. I, I have a feeling that you'll be right back towards the top next year. Uh, I mean, the you got Jalen Hurts, and the receiving core is incredible. Devonte Smith. A.J. Brown, Dallas Goddard's a really mm -hmm. solid tight end. He's a top tight end in the league. Absolutely. Top tight end in the league. And, and their defense, I mean, it didn't show up in the Super Bowl, but all year their defense was really solid. Uh, they, I mean, the rookies, they had a lot of rookies that are only going to get better. Yeah, that's Jordan, what I was going to say. You know, the, the, the George boys, Jordan Davis and the Kobe Dean, they're only going to get better. 
uh, the Eagles are going to be a really good team here to watch for the next several years. Yeah, and they have, uh, you know, mixed in with all the, I mean, you have Darius Slay, you got, you got a bunch of guys like Denobic and Sue, Fletcher Cox, but you also have a bunch of young guys as well. You got, you know, C.J. gardner Johns. I mean, he played outstanding football this season and had a really good Super Bowl as well. Josh Sweat, Hassan Reddick, I mean, Jordan Davis, like you said, they've got a bunch of guys that can keep this defense going for, I mean, multiple years. Yeah, I mean, those, those, guys, are, those guys are dogs. And then C.D. CD Deuce, I mean, he's going to bring it to the table. He's going to energize your whole team. I mean, that one guy just gives so much energy. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's coming from, I'm biased. It's from, I'm a Saints fan, but... Yeah, I, I love to, I, I don't know. I mean, we, we like to do that to That'll, I mean, it'll happen. get defended. I mean, I thought he ended Isaiah Pacheco's career yeah, on that one hit. I mean, I cannot believe that he did not go into concussion protocol for the rest of the game. That yeah. was a, a nasty hit. Kind of and just he, shows he's kind of player Isaiah Pacheco a ball. is. Yeah. I mean, hard, absolutely hard runner. And that, that Chiefs team, this Eagles team is, I think, by far more talented than the Chiefs. Just they about, got, I mean, just, all, just, just about all around, yeah. I mean, you look at the front seven, you look at the secondary, you look at the offensive line, receiving core, running backs. I mean, they've got them beat really everywhere. It's just... They haven't got them beat an Andy Reid. Patrick uh, oh, Mahomes and Andy Reid, man. I, I, and I think the depth for Kansas City is something that's not talked about because people talk about Mahomes and Kelsey doing the whole thing. They've got really good depth. You talk about Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony, and Marquez Valdez, Scantling. Uh, Jarrett McKinnon, you know, the, the yeah, awareness to slide at the one-yard line instead of getting his Super Bowl touchdown, sets up the field goal, eliminates the Eagles any chance of having time to make a comeback. Uh, their depth is really good, and it helped them out a lot in this game. And depth even is Isaiah Pacheco. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he's not, wasn't the biggest running back coming into this draft. Uh, and not even like that. early, yeah. not even early in the year. You nope. know, I mean... He had, didn't even have a name till later on. But, yeah, I do like the Jarek McKinnon play. I mean, imagine, like, you're in that situation. You're looking at the end zone. It is the Super Bowl, and you're about to score your first Super Bowl touchdown, and you have to give it up. I mean, it's a beautiful play. It's but, like, I mean, how are you? That's – I would have ran I'm my – I'm Jarek McKinnon. I would have ran in. I'm going I'm in. so happy I'm running ten in. Ten times right? out of ten. Like, I'm not even thinking about, yeah. oh, yeah, there's less than two minutes left. We can knee the ball and win the Super Bowl by yeah. kicking a field goal. I mean – but Smart play, and was. I mean, he had a great season as well. He did. I, I mean, I, Jarek McKinnon played ver very well in the, in the receiving game. That's what this Chiefs team does is they just have a bunch of, like, they don't have any, they have obviously Travis Kelsey, but they lose Tyreek Hill. You don't have really star receivers or star running backs. Right. But, like you said, the depth. But, yeah, they, they right. brought they, in they guys. The right players. Right, that's why, I think that's why they brought in Tony. I mean, he fits what that, that offense is looking for, just some guys that can make some random – Really good yep, plays out of nowhere, and they, just, well, they have that all the way plays. down their all the way down their yeah absolutely. Their team. I, I think I mean, the Tyreek Hill thing is kind of like the Packers Devontae Adams thing, where it's like people are saying, "All right, how are you going to replace Devontae Adams? How are you going to replace Tyreek Hill? You don't do that with one guy. They bring in Marquez Valdez Scanlon. He's the he provides the deep threat ability mm -hmm. that Tyreek Hill did. You bring in Juju Smith Schuster. They're receiving you. You take these superstar players, you lose, and then you bring in a few guys to replace them, and and it worked. Uh, plus, you know, having, Chiefs. having Travis Kelsey and yeah. Patrick Mahomes for the Chiefs helps. But, yeah, yeah right. no, having Travis Kelsey obviously helps, but worked for the Chiefs, but not the Packers. All right, <laughs> taking cheap <laughs> shots. Some, some Packers I will. I shots. always will. I always will. It's all right. Any chance I get. Well, moving on here uh, from the Super Bowl talk, the NBA trade deadline. Last time we uh, talked to you here on Sports Cubed. Uh, we broke down the Kyrie Irving trade, and that was just the tip of the iceberg. Only a couple of days later was oh, yeah. the uh, trade deadline, and it was big. And we talked about last week how, you know, things with the Nets may only get worse. KD might still want out, and then sure enough, he goes in a huge blockbuster trade. Maybe one of the, I was talking with one of my friends, how this may be one of the biggest blockbuster trade deadlines in history. Just name Kyrie Irving gets traded. Kevin Durant, he's one of the greatest scorers. In NBA history, and he gets traded at the trade deadline. Stuff like that doesn't happen all that often. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really. I mean, if you're the Nets, you, I mean, you trade away Kyrie. You don't get a lot of youth back in that deal. You get a bunch of, you know, 
role players with Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, guys like that. And then you look at the Kevin Durant trade, they get Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, and uh, Jay Crowder, which, who was flipped for, uh, what was it, I think three seconds maybe. And then you get, oh, Brooklyn also gets four first round picks and a basically five first round picks. So I mean, it was the right move, I think, for the Nets because it was obvious Kyrie didn't want to be there. It was obvious Kevin Durant didn't want to be there. And going back to last year, it was obvious James Harden didn't want to be there. Yeah, he, ca he called it. He called it from the beginning. James, yeah. James was the first one out. He, and, uh, he knew. You're the Nets. You, you're able to get assets. Mikel Bridges is a very good asset to have. Any team would love to have Mikel Bridges. He has never missed a game due to injury. And never. He is, which, you know, knock on, knock on wood, he doesn't miss any games anytime soon, but you also get Cam Johnson. I mean, he does his job very well from three and five first round picks. I mean, the Nets, the Nets got what they wanted and I think that they should be, should be pretty happy what kind of spot they're in now because you're able to gain back a lot of younger assets and then you just build from there. Move on from what they've been trying to do in the past. I mean, like yeah. when they brought in mm -hmm. KG and yep. Paul Pierce, like yeah. it, it hasn't worked in the past years. They're going to have to move on, and I think they finally made the, the decision to do that. And, uh, and was, then it looks pretty solid right now. I like I like the Nets team. The defense mm -hmm. against the Sixers, the first game, all the superstars are out. They played one of the best defensive games of the year. It was awesome. That was always their problem. It was awesome. Was they weren't able. They they were very inconsistent defensively, and then you have Kyrie missing games. You have Kevin Durant missing mm -hmm. games, and that's just not going to. Right. It's not going to win you games. Not at all. It's not going to help your team out either when your two best players are consistently missing bowl games. Yeah. I want to talk about the Luka, the Luka trade, and I think that it's, it's going wrong in the opposite way of what people thought. I mean, you, everyone thought that they would probably try to have one superstar, and it's like they're both trying not to be that one superstar, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because that end of the game, I think it was Minnesota they were playing, and they were both trying mm -hmm. to get an open shot, and neither of them wanted to shoot. They wanted... Luca wanted Kyrie to shoot, Kyrie wanted Luca to shoot, and Kyrie ends up passing the ball away. And I mean, he's not looking to be that one guy there. And I like to see that. I, I'm very excited to see what the Mavs can do with that. Because once they get it together, I mean, they're going to kick off yeah. and do some really good once things. Once they build that chemistry, uh, yeah. if they can, you know, uh, Kyrie isn't necessarily known for right. building chemistry with other superstars. But if he can pull that off, I mean, Luca is, I think, going to be the, one of the more talented players in NBA history when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. He's just incredibly talented at all facets of scoring. And he's an underrated defender, too. If they can build the chemistry, uh, look out for the Mavs, uh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, what's cool about Luka is he's not, he's not really athletically gifted. Like he's, not, he's not jumping out the gym. He's not making crazy plays. Um, obviously, he's, he's athletic. athletic. <laughs> obviously, he's athletic. But that's not what makes him as good as he is. He's an insanely good shot creator. It's kind of the same thing that makes Kyrie good. He's an incredible shot creator and can shoot from really anywhere on the court. But inside that three-point line, they're lethal. And I think having both these guys on the same team, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting defensively because you trade away your best defender, Dorian Finney-Smith, who was a crucial part of this Mavs team. He was. And, and it, it kind of showed him in the last two games. Yeah, and it's like you don't really... Mavs still have some things to figure out. I don't think Kyrie makes them this. I don't think it. I don't think Kyrie makes them a favorite in the West. I mean, yeah, they're what? They're sixth right now. It, and, sixth in the West. And the you know you have the Nuggets, which the Nuggets I mean are a. I I think. Way better Nuggets here. Mavs are right there. I think the Nuggets just have more talent than the Mavs, and that's their problem. Is that you trade away Spencer Dinwiddie, which. It's the right trade to make if you're the Mavs, but you also have other things to figure out now. You got your you got your co-star. Now you need to figure out things defensively and bench-wise because they don't have a lot of depth on their team. So we'll just have to see how that works out for the Mavs. A couple more big trades here: uh, the three-team trade between the Lakers, Minnesota, and Utah. Uh, D'Angelo Russell goes back to LA. They also get Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt, Minnesota. Uh, gets Mike Conley, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Juan Toscano, Anderson, Damian Jones, and a, a three second-round picks. And then Utah gets a first-round pick in 2027 and Russell Westbrook. I don't, 
I'm not sure if they're keeping. I don't think they're keeping Russell Westbrook, mm -hmm. and I don't think Minnesota's keeping Mike Conley. They're just contract things with that trade. But really, the the big thing there is D'Angelo Russell and Jared Vanderbilt. I think that's an underrated part of it. Mm -hmm. Going to L.A., they can help out a lot there. Yeah, I mean Jared Vanderbilt defensively is, I mean, he's a very important defender, and he was a very important defender for the Timberwolves. But the Timberwolves were obviously underperforming. They were expected to be a top four seed in the West. In the excuse me, in the West. They weren't doing that. The Gobert trade wasn't really working out. And so you trade D'Angelo Russell, which I I mean, I, I like the trade for the Lakers, and I like it for the Timberwolves because you get your ball dominant point guard away. You get now it's Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns, basically, at that mm -hmm. point. And so you let Ant have the ball in his hands most of the time, which I think he's proven that he can. He fits that role. And then D'Angelo Russell, obviously the Lakers need help shooting-wise. You get Malik Beasley. Jared Vanderbilt's a little bit inconsistent from three, but he still has the three-point shot. Malik Beasley is a very good shooter. And then you get another scorer in D'Lo. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be, I mean, I think that's going to be huge for the Lakers. Yeah, and there. Jared Vanderbilt really, if nothing else, I think he's got the potential to be more, but if nothing else, he fills that Thomas Bryant role mm -hmm. when Thomas Bryant is gone. And then, you, like you said, you also add uh, D'Angelo Russell, and he is leaps and bounds a better player than he was in his first stint as a as a young player. Oh yeah, no, uh, especially as of late. I mean, he's since December he's averaging over 20 points a game. He's been very, very solid for the Timberwolves, and I don't see it slowing down as he becomes a Laker. Right. I don't. I don't see the Timberwolves slowing down right now. They they are looking hot right now. I don't, I'd be I'd be scared. I mean, if you now. you get the. I mean, D'Lo D'Lo's a good player, don't get me wrong, but I would rather have the ball in Ant's hands than mm -hmm. D'Angelo Russell's. I think every Timberwolves fan is also agreeing with that. And so you trade D'Lo, now it's the Anthony Edwards show, Carl Anthony Town show. Let those guys eat, let them do their thing, and they've been doing their thing since the trade. Yes, they have. One last uh, big trade from the NBA trade deadline was the four-team one. It almost didn't go through. It was, was it going to go through? Was yeah, it there not? was a little bit of a lot weird of young situation. Players. The Detroit Pistons get James Wiseman. Atlanta Hawks get Sadiq Bay. Golden State Warriors get Gary Payton the second. And Portland got five future <laughs> second-round picks and Kevin Knox. So with Portland, I mean, you really weren't getting much out of Gary Payton. He hadn't played all year. He, what, he like, just came back. The play from Shaden Sharp and Anthony Simmons is, I mean, they've been playing outstanding as of late. And so, I mean, you get what you can for Gary Payton. He was on, they signed him to, what, a three-year deal? You sent him back to Golden State. I know he's happy to be back in Golden State. Yeah. So, I mean, it works out for both teams. Golden State gets, you know, their defensive point guard back, which he really showed up in the playoffs last year, which was a huge part of the Warriors' championship run. And Sadiq Bay, I mean... It's a nice addition for Atlanta. I, I really expected more out of Sadiq Bey. I thought he was going to be, like, maybe not the best player, but he's definitely, like, I mean, he's a good three to have. He's solid at defense. He's a solid, I mean, solid shooter and scorer. It's just. I, th I think he fits Atlanta's system <laughs> a lot better. I mean, it's, Atlanta is, they're big on, you know, even Trey Young is the guy that leads the way for them. So it's like, uh, uh, Sadiq Bey, a guy that plays good defense, mm -hmm. and he shoots the three. I mean, that's, that's what they want. Uh, and so they got him, and if they can turn him in, I, I agree with you. He's not quite been as uh, big or as good for the Detroit as I thought he would. But yeah. who is in Detroit yeah, usually? That's, that's a good point. Uh, so maybe he'll, point. with a change, a change of scenery, he can break out. Yeah, I like, I like that role in, in mm -hmm. Atlanta. For and, and with Atlanta, it's like Atlanta's a weird team, though. They have so much talent on their team. So much talent. And they're they what? just don't yeah. produce wins. I mean, they've lost to the Hornets too many times this year. I'm and the Hornets, I mean, they're trying to get Victor. They're yeah, exactly. Victor, bro. But like, we're struggling doing that right now because yeah. we beat teams like the Hawks for some reason. <laughs> and, and then I say yeah. we, I'm a Hornets I, fan. Not uh, we. Another key on the uh, change of scenery thing, I think Jay, James Wiseman is going to get more playing time, I think. It's an interesting fit, as we were talking about before the show, with Detroit's got a lot of big men, you know, Jalen Duran. Isaiah Stewart, so he's going to have to find someone to fit in there. But James Wiseman, he just wasn't, I mean, he's a what, second overall pick, mm -hmm. a top five pick, yep. and just wasn't 
I mean, half the time was spent in the G League when he was with the Warriors. So he gets to change the scenery. We'll see how that goes for him. Yeah, I think, it, I, I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and say I think he'll be a successful center in Detroit, but a nice change in scenery I think will do him well because, I mean, the Warriors just don't need James Wiseman. I don't think he fits what they're trying to do right now. Kevon Looney cool. fits yeah, what they're trying just, to do right now. I was now. just about to say Kevon Looney. James Wiseman has, he has the potential, and, mm -hmm. I mean, that's why they drafted him second overall. But, I don't know. I mean, it's a loaded center class in Detroit now. You have Isaiah Stewart, you have Jalen Duran, and now you just add James Wiseman in there. So, a little bit of an experiment, but we'll just have to see how that goes. Patrick Beverly went to Orlando with the trade with uh, Mo Bamba. And, but Pat with Ben us, got cut. With the, oh, did he? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. The Lakers. The, second. the Lakers, I don't know. I don't know. We'll just have to see how the Lakers do. Yeah, I wonder what LeBron's cooking. Because you, you replaced Thomas Bryant, who has been playing outstanding yeah, this season. very well. And you trade him for seconds in Devon Reed. But you get Jared Vanderbilt in that other trade. He yeah, which... It's the same role. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't know. We'll just have to see. We'll just have to see how the Lakers do. Well, that was uh, this past week or so in NBA. Now looking forward to the future in the NBA. We've got the All-Star Weekend coming up. Uh, the participants for uh, the multiple challenges and things like that have been uh, released for the dunk contest. I know Austin's not happy about this dunk contest. It's a bit, I mean, it's just how it's been the last few years. It's been a little underwhelming with the people in it. This year it's got Kenyon Martin Jr. from the Rockets, Mac McClung from the G League, uh, Trey Murphy III from the Pelicans, and Jericho Sims from the Knicks. I mean, I know that you guys have to be like me every year, mark the calendar, the NBA dunk contest and three-point night it was almost more important to watch to me than the actual All-Star game. Mm -hmm. I loved watching. I can remember, I have a core memory of watching Jeremy Evans, of all people, <laughs> like just go crazy in the dunk contest in like 2013 or something like that. And it's just not got that vibe anymore that it used to have. No, and I mean, even back when, I mean, what we're seeing right now with Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine, I mean, that's one of the best dunk contests I've ever watched. Yeah. Uh, it's, actually, it's the best dunk contest I've ever watched. But now you have... I mean, we're going to the G League. I want to see, like... I want to see, like... I want to see guys like John Morant. I want to see guys like Anthony Edwards. Everyone else wants to see those guys. Everyone, everyone's always wanted to see LeBron James in the dunk contest. Sharp. No, no, one, no one wants to do the dunk contest, though, and it kind of kills it when you got, which that's no disrespect to like guys like Trey Murphy or Kenyon Martin, but, I mean, like, I, want, I want to see John Moran. I want to see Anthony Edwards. I want to see those, these ultra-athletic superstars in there, which I do like Matt McClung. I've always enjoyed watching him play, but, and, and I'm, not, I'm not sitting here saying they're not going to have good dunks, Like, I, I don't know. I don't we know. got some cool judges, though. Jamal Crawford, Dominique Wilkins, Carl Malone, Harold Miner. I mean, I love... Lisa Leslie. I love Jay Crossover, Jamal Crawford. Everybody but, does. Uh, the dunk contest judge, that's not exactly what he was known for, but yeah. I'll take it. More of a sixth man of the year. Kind yeah, of no. But... And then, uh, after the, the dunk contest, we'll see how that one goes. I mean, I'm sure there'll be some... I mean, we... we don't want to just take it away from before it happens. We can see what these guys will, will bring out and maybe try to bring it back to prominence. I am actually really excited for the three-point contest, though. There's a, a lot of big names. Mm -hmm. Like you were talking about, you want names in the dunk contest. Oh, yeah, big names. The, the three-point contest has some names. Tyrese Halliburton and Buddy Heald from the Pacers. Go Pacers. Tyler Hero from the Heat. Kevin Herter from the Kings. Damian Lillard from the Trailblazers. Laurie Markkinen from the Jazz. Anthony Simons, uh, former dunk contest winner and one of the worst dunk contests ever. <laughs> uh, he's going to try the three-point contest this year. And then Jason Tatum from the Celtics. I mean, there you go, right there, an MVP candidate. Damian Litter, a perennial MVP candidate. Tyrus Halliburton is going to be an MVP candidate in the future, I think. No, I believe so uh, as and well. So you've got some names in the three-point contest and a lot of great three-point shooters. And you know, there's always names in it. And you know, some guy like Kevin Herter or Buddy Hill is going to win. Hey, maybe, but uh, and I, I like the three-point contest a lot, and there's a lot of good three-point shooters here. Yeah, I think, I mean, my pick personally, 
Is Anthony Simmons? I mean, dude's been killing it. I, it and it's it, like you said, it's so weird. Like, you know, we've seen like Buddy Heald, what he won in 2020, and I mean, you see, you don't, you might not see a superstar win it, but my pick's Anthony Simmons. So, I did like that year when Matt Bonner came in and just destroyed all the superstars. Yeah, no, that was the red That's rocket. I like to see though. I like to see that kind, and you just don't. I mean, if you have a superstar in the dunk contest and they lose to, like, Mac McClung, that's, that would be cool. It's a big deal. It makes exactly. it a lot bigger deal versus Mac McClung against other guys that don't play. Yeah, like Mac McClung against Jericho Sims, a backup center for the Knicks. That's not what I want to see, man. And that's then moving ahead to, to the, the skills challenge, we got Team Antetokounmpo's with uh, Alex, Giannis, and Thanias. Uh, and then Team Jazz with Jordan Clarkson, Walker Kessler, and Colin Sexton. And then Team Rooks with Paulo Banquero, Jaden Ivey, and Jabari Smith Jr. Well, the skills contest, we'll see how that one goes. I mean, I'm not going to go with Team Antetokounmpo. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I mean, Giannis is going to have to try to carry that one. I mean, the Team Rooks looks real good. Yeah. I mean, Paulo Banquero, Jaden Ivey, and Jabari Smith Jr. Uh, Give me I'm, Team Antetokounmpo's, man. Really? They got that chemistry. Oh, well, maybe. They got that chemistry. That's what you need. Nah. Sorry, but, Team Jazz. Nobody I mean, really thinks anything. Yeah, I mean, no one thinks right. Team Jazz. <laughs> hey, I like Jordan. I like Jordan Clarkson. <laughs> I mean, I like, I'm really good with Jordan Clarkson in 2K. I don't know if he's going to do that great in the skills contest against guys like Paulo Bancaro and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they're long and lengthy. He might square there. up to him. You never, you he never might square know. up to Giannis. You never, you never know. know. He won't throw a punch, but he will square up. Yep, that is what, I mean, that's just what he does. And so that'll be the All-Star uh, weekend stuff there. And then, of course, the All-Star game, actually, which they'll find out the teams. They'll pick teams before that game. Uh, moving ahead, finally, we've got today a, a little preview for the MLB. Pitchers and catchers reported on Monday. Spring training stuff's in the air. Uh, just a quick season preview. I mean, I can't wait. I'm a Cardinals fan. Uh, things are looking good. We'll see how the starting rotation holds up, but I can't wait for baseball. Yeah, no, I'm quite excited. And, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm a Brewers fan, so I'm obviously looking forward to Brewers baseball. And I'm excited to see. I mean, got some new acquisitions. And all across the MLB, you got new acquisitions everywhere. Just excited to see how each player does in their new situation. And, you know, there's always those breakout players. You always got those, you know, yeah. the quote unquote weirdos that have. I mean, Stephen Kwan. Yeah, Stephen Kwan. I mean, just uh, excited to see what will happen and excited to see those. I mean, I'm just excited. Yeah, uh, I mean, I love baseball. I'm always excited to see the breakout rookies, who's going to be the, the superstar rookie this year, things like that, who's going to be the team that comes out of nowhere. Uh, one thing I'm going to be looking at a lot is the uh, Texas Rangers. They brought in a lot of guys over the last couple of season. I just, I'm not confident. I don't, I don't think Bruce Bochy and Mike Maddox are the right guys to lead the club in this area. I think they're probably past it. Uh, I think we saw that with Tony La Russa. Mm -hmm. So the Texas Rangers are a big team for me to watch out, as well as the Cardinals and all the Central Division. So baseball season's coming up. Really, really excited about that. Uh, can't wait. And can't wait to keep doing more Sports Cubed here uh, week after week for Austin Harrelson and Tyus Gordon. We'll see you next time.